Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group for part number four, talking about an exciting way to get involved, small groups, and looking at principles of smallness in scripture so we can see a God who does some big things. In fact, today we're going to talk about him doing greater things. But let's pray. And we're praying, number one, that God would be with us in our study. But also, I pray that you have been blessed by these lessons. If you have, pass it on to somebody else. Shoot them a text, email them the link, whatever. Get it to them so that they can know that there is a place where they can be encouraged and they can be inspired. Because as we go to today's lesson, that is our prayer. Thank you. Let's pray. That in Jesus' name, Lord, you would inspire us through your greatness. Be big in our hearts, even if we are of little faith, of little ability, even just little. You specialize in doing this, Father, and that's why we surrender it to you now. All our smallness, amen, amen. Surrendering the smallness, right? Not just the allness, but when you bring all together that we really and actually are, it's very small in relationship to this great God that we have. But guess what? That's the glory of the gospel. The glory of the gospel is that small groups are able to do big things because of a bigger God. And a lot of times it's in the small that the Lord is, he's preferring to work because there's less room for ego and there's more dependence on him. Um, there's more space uh, for him to move in because it's not crowded out with, with a whole bunch of people and their money or, or their ideas or their pride. Small things because of a bigger God. What examples do you see that? You can go to the book of Acts 4.31 and see when Peter, they had prayed. That's Peter, John, and the believers. They prayed. The place was shaken where they were assembled together. And everyone in there, wasn't a lot, but everyone in there, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. This boldness did not come from bigness. This boldness came from the presence of the Lord, his spirit in a few people. He doesn't need a lot, but whatever he has, he needs all of it. And when they were all on one accord, they were all filled. So now when you go to Acts 4, take it out and look at Acts 12. Acts 12, 12 says, when Peter, here he's again, had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Do a little context here. Peter got locked up for preaching the gospel and he had just been freed through a miracle of grace where he was led out by an angel. And when he was considering this thing that, that had just happened, this massive miracle, he's led now to the place where there were a group of people gathered praying and they were praying for him, I would venture to say they were there were more people in the prison than there probably were in that prayer meeting. There was probably more uh, more capital. There were people with more money in that prison or even in that that place, which was probably a fortress where you even had other government leaders and stuff. There was more power in that place than there was in this living room in somebody's house somewhere. But who won? Who overcame? Where was the miracle? The miracle was from that small group that was praying for God to do something bigger than, not just bigger, but bigger than them. Something that they could not do. That's what greatness does. When we recognize our smallness, it's, it's opening the door now for him to say, now that you know your place, let me show you my power. We see it one more time in Acts 20, 28, where it says they're commending the faithful, they're commending the believers, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed, feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Herein lies the power, herein lies the value. All the flock of God, why are they special? Are they special because they're a majority? Are they special because there are so many of them? No and no. The flock of God is special because these are they which have been purchased with the precious blood of Christ. He is the one that gives us our value. We can't poke out our chest and stomp our feet and hold our hair up in the sky because we are a big church or we are a powerful ministry or we are whatever. We are because he is. That's where we bow our heads and 
we lift our hands and we raise our voices in praise like Israel of old when they were faithful, when they did not look at their sword, but instead they were relying on the spirit. That's when they were able to tear down walls without touching them. That's when they were able to have prayer meetings, have a camp meeting and have a parade. And it would be a war. It would be a battle that the father, that Jehovah, that Jesus himself would fight for them. We've got to go through some real transitions that really in a lot of ways are remissions. Going back to remember, small groups do big things because of a bigger God.